so my name is Adam Cowley, and I'm a member of the developer operations team uh, at Neo4j. So I'm a, a developer experience engineer. Um, today I'll be uh, introducing you to the, the concept of a graph app, uh, show you some of the graph apps that are available, uh, and also tell you how to, to build your own. Um, so for the people that, that uh, don't know, not heard the, the term of the graph app before, um, you, you would have seen uh, from the presentation today, um, NFJ Desktop. Um, so if you've uh, been on to NFJ.com uh, to download NFJ, chances are you've, you've downloaded NFJ Desktop. Um, and then, uh, so NFJ Desktop uh, itself is a user interface that allows uh, developers to manage multiple projects uh, and graphs on their local uh, computers, as well as uh, remote um, database connections to things like uh, um, you know, uh, uh, Google Cloud or um, NFJ Aura. And graph apps are uh, applications uh, that interact with, with NFJ databases um, through NFJ Desktop uh, and through an API that NFJ Desktop uh, provides. So the uh, the graph apps uh, are listed on the uh, in the graph apps pane on the, the left hand side of the screen. Uh, so you can launch uh, any of the graph apps that are installed by default uh, by uh, clicking the open arrow uh, next to the, um, the the name of the app. Uh, by clicking the down arrow next to the active uh, graph, um, or you can uh, launch the graph apps via um, the command bar. So it's either by clicking the magnifying glass in the, the top right hand corner, um, or by using the keyboard shortcut, which is Command and K on a Mac or Control and K on, on Windows. Uh, and then you type the name uh, and then hit enter. So graph apps themselves um, are single page applications built with the, um, the front end framework of your choice, or if you prefer uh, vanilla JavaScript uh, and HTML. Uh, and then these uh, graph apps are then served by NFJ Desktop through uh, the Chromium browser. Uh, so for a comprehensive list of all of the, the graph apps that are available, you can go to install.graphapp.io, or there is a graph app which allows you to, um, to view and install graph apps um, inside NFJ Desktop itself. Uh, so from the, the graph app gallery, uh, you can see a list of uh, all of the, the graph apps available at the moment. Um, and you can uh, click to install, or you can uh, read more about in your uh, view source code and, and things like that. Um, so once you've, you've clicked install on, on the graph app gallery, your graph apps will be listed on the um, on the left hand side uh, in the graph apps pane. And you can also install graph apps using the, the form at the bottom of the graph apps pane. Uh, so you can paste a, a link to um, a, a graph app uh, to something hosted on um, on npm, for example. Uh, or you can um, put any, any website or, or remotely hosted uh, graph app there. Uh, or you can drag and drop a tar archive uh, to, to install it. So in terms of the people that are building graph apps, uh, so uh, NFJ have converted some of their software into to graph apps. So they can be used uh, as, as graph apps. Um, so if you've used NFJ so far, then chances are you've come across NFJ browser. And um, if you haven't, then uh, NFJ uh, browser is a tool that allows you to uh, run Cypher queries against the, the database. Uh, and then allows you to visualize the results either in a uh, force graph layout uh, or in table format. If code is not your thing, then you may prefer NFJ Bloom. Um, so NFJ Bloom allows you to query the, the database without writing any code. As you type into the search bar at the top, uh, Bloom will examine the database and then suggest appropriate labels, relationship types, and properties. Um, and Bloom is also great for large scale visualizations and allows you more customization options than NFJ browser. Uh, so you can customize things like the, the colors, uh, the icons, the captions, and things like that. So the, the NFJ Labs team have, have built um, educational apps uh, to, to help you get started with, with NFJ. Um, so if you're new to, to graph databases, and the graph gallery is, is a good place to look for inspiration. And essentially, the, the graph app gallery is a curated list of over 100 um, graph examples, all categorized by use case and industry. Uh, and each of the examples has a, a play as, as browser guide button on there. And um, what that will do is that will open up a, a browser guide inside the FJ browser, which will take you step by step through uh, through the, the, the use case. Uh, will and uh, mentioned earlier the the graph algorithms playground or Neuler. Um, so this was built by my colleagues Mark and Erfan. Um, we're going into too much detail about this, but essentially it allows you to uh, explore the, uh, the the number of um, available graph algorithms uh, that are available inside the, the Graph Data Science Library and also allow you to, to test them uh, on your data set and then preview uh, the, the results um, in, in real time. 
Uh, so if, if anybody's interested in this, I don't think anyone's mentioned this so far. Uh, so th this book is available, I think, for another three weeks. Uh, so get it while you can, um, while it's still free. Uh, so if you go to nifj.com slash graph algorithms book. And so we also have a, a range of um, graph apps that are useful for, for everyday life. One of my favorite graph apps is uh, Halin, built by David Allen. Uh, and what Halen uh, allows you to do is it allows you to monitor the FJ by displaying useful metrics on, on screens and in charts, uh, and also uh, helps you to diagnose common configuration and performance problems. Uh, and you can also manage multiple databases and, and all of the, the new features inside the uh, FJ 4.0. Uh, we have um, a, an officially supported detail tool, uh, which is built by, um, by ourselves um, in the FJ Labs uh, in partner with our friends at Laris. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to take data from any JDB source uh, and then convert it into a graph model. And then once you've done that, you can import the data into the, uh, the database with just a few clicks. Uh, if you are a user of NFJ Aura, then we have the NFJ Cloud tool. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to copy uh, your local database into uh, an NFJ Aura instance with a, uh, with a single click. So the, the consultants that work for Neo4j are also um, building graph apps that make their lives easier and hopefully you, uh, your lives easier as well. Uh, one thing that I, I use on, on an almost daily basis uh, is the uh, a database analyzer by uh, Case Vector, um, one of my uh, colleagues in the NFJ field team. So the uh, database analyzer allows, uh, allows you to um, analyze your, your database and gives you graphical representations of your data model and, and uh, database statistics. And the query log analyzer uh, gives you a user-friendly view of your query log files so you can identify and fix any slow running queries. But it's not just near for j that are building graph apps. We also have uh, partners that, that build graph apps. So the, the team at Kinebiz has built a graph app called GraphXR. And GraphXR is a tool that allows you to visualize a graph data in a number of formats, including uh, 3D force graphs, uh, maps, and charts. And uh, so COVID-19 is, um, is a topic that's um, close to, to everybody's hearts at the moment. Um, Kinebiz has done some great an uh, analysis um, and great visualization of data um, based around uh, COVID-19 cases. So I'd, I'd recommend checking that out. Um, so if you prefer to build your own UIs, then the YWorks, uh, the FJ Explorer is, uh, is, is the one for you. So this uh, demonstrates the capabilities of Y files, which is a, a JavaScript visualization library, uh, and then um, features a, a number of off-the-shelf layouts and visualization options that you can use inside your own uh, graph apps. Community members also build in their own graph apps. Um, so for example, uh, Estelle has, has built a great app uh, called Neomap, and it's a great tool for visualizing uh, spatial data uh, from Neo4j uh, onto maps. Uh, so it will take any um, uh, any uh, spatial data, uh, any point data from uh, near for j uh, and then allows you to um, create layers of uh, markers, polygons, or heat maps, uh, and then the combination of, the, of, of these um, uh, of these different types um, can lead to some really uh, interesting visualizations. Um, so you may be thinking, I'm sold. How do I get started? Uh, so there is a developer guide at um, uh, uh, neofj.com forward slash developer forward slash graph app development. Uh, and there are also a, uh, a set of um, example apps, some, some very basic uh, example apps um, on GitHub at github.com slash apps and then graph app starter. Uh, but essentially the process you will take will be um, something like this. Uh, so you start off by enabling the developer tools inside uh, desktop. Um, then create a project either with uh, HTML or JavaScript or with the framework of your choice. Uh, get the context from, from uh, Neo4j uh, desktop, uh, from desktop API. Create an instance of the JavaScript driver, and then you query the, the active database from there. So to enable developer mode, uh, you go to the settings pane uh, on the, the left-hand side. And then at the, the bottom of, of that um, page, there's a, a developer tool section. So you click uh, Enable Development Mode uh, to uh, Enable Development Mode, and then you'd enter the um, the entry point of your app. So that would be, in this case, localhost 8080, um, or it could be a, a path to uh, HTML file. Um, and then you set the, the root path, uh, which is the, the corresponding path to the, the, the root of your project. But if in doubt, you just uh, use a slash on that one. 
Um, so once you've done that, um, the development app will be available from the uh, menu uh, on, on the, um, the, the drop-down menu. Um, it will be available in uh, the, the graph app pane. Um, or you can use the, the command bar to open up the development app. So for example, if, if I'm creating a, a very basic project, what I do is create a, um, create a new folder uh, and then create a, an index.html file. Uh, so this will be a, a very basic app, which will uh, essentially just get a, a count of the database, a number of nodes in the database, and then add that to um, to, to the, the screen. Um, so if you open up this, uh, this graph app, um, or, or the development app, um, you'll see just a, a plain file. Um, so the, you have a, a development uh, app bar across the top, which gives you a couple of useful buttons. So for uh, reloading the uh, the app or a button to access the developer tools, um, for example, the, the network tab or the, the console tab. So the next step is to receive uh, retrieve the, the context. Uh, so NFJ Desktop gives you an API which allows you to get the the, the, the user's configuration of, of NFJ Desktop, um, and this provides um, some some things that may be useful to your um, your application. Uh, for example, the, the the projects that the user has created and the the graphs that they create inside the projects, uh, or a list of um, uh, activation keys. Um, so at any one time, there's only one active graph in the database. Um, so to find this, you could use a, um, a run and reduce and find um, functions over the, the projects. Um, and essentially, you're looking for the, the graph with a um, property, uh, status property of, of active uh, in uppercase. And then each one of those graphs supplies some information about the, the graph's configuration. So for example, the, the name and the, the status of that. Um, so, in your graph app, you create a, a single instance of the uh, official JavaScript driver, and this would then be what you've used to interact with, with Neo4j, so you'd use that to, to run uh, Cypher queries. So, you take the, um, the the credentials from the active graph, so through connection.configuration.protocols.bolt, and that will give you the URL, uh, the username and the password that you can then use to, to, to create the instance of the driver. From there, you create a session uh, against the database uh, and then run a, a cycle query through that session. Um, so if we piece all of that together uh, into, uh, into one file, so um, I've used the um, NIFJ desktop API to get the context. Then from that context, I've uh, found the, uh, the active project and then the active graph. Uh, created an instance of the NIFJ driver through that uh, and then um, run a, a query on there, so match n, return count n as count, to get a, a count of all the nodes inside the database. Once that uh, that, that query is, is is resolved and returned a value, uh, I can uh, then uh, place that into the, um, the the strong tag with the ID of count. Uh, so by refreshing the app, then you would see something like this. So for example, we've got 36,000 um, nodes in the database. So once you've built the app, um, there's a few options for, for how you deploy it. Uh, so the first thing you can do is you can create a, uh, a tar file. So for example, uh, using uh, npm pack, uh, which will um, package up the, um, the app into the, the correct format. Uh, or you can host your graph app online, uh, and then you can just send a, um, a, the, the URL to, um, to other users to install. Uh, and by the way, once you've done this, uh, contact us, and we can put your, uh, your graph app into the, into the graph app gallery. Um, so if you take the, the tar file option, uh, then the, the, the structure of the archive will look something like this. Um, so in the, the root of that tar file, you should have a package.json file, uh, which should have some, some basic information about the app. Uh, and then there will be a disk folder, which has the, uh, the index.html folder, which is the entry point to your app, plus any other uh, images, uh, scripts, or any other assets that the graph app uh, requires. So the package.json will look a little bit like this. Um, so it holds some, some basic information about your, your JavaScript project, um, but also um, there are a few things in there that are, that are interesting to NFJ Desktop. Uh, for example, the, the name and the version, which you use inside the UI. Um, and then there's also a, um, that you can add a, a NFJ Desktop item, uh, which allows you to define, for example, the, uh, the, the version of the, the NFJ Desktop API, in this case, 1.2.0 or above, and any permissions that, that you may request. 
Um, we also recommend bundling with a, a manifest.json file. Um, so this specifies some metadata about your graph app for, um, uh, for use inside the, the, the desktop UI. Um, and then any uh, values inside this will override your, um, your package.json. Uh, so, for example, we've uh, specified the, the name of that, which we use inside the UI. Um, we specified a, a set of icons which can be used uh, with, with relative uh, paths to, um, to to the disk folder. Uh, in this case, we're requesting permissions as well, um, and we are um, requesting some some plugin dependencies there. Um, so, for example, if your um, application requires um, APOC or the, the graph algorithms library or, or the GraphQL library, for example, um, then you can specify uh, any JAR file um, with the uh, valid uh, Maven coordinates uh, inside there, um, and it will um, it will install that uh, against the the active database before the app runs. Uh, so you can create deep links uh, from um, from your app into a, a, another graph app using the NFJ Desktop scheme. Uh, so, for example, if you link into your graph app. Uh, you can use the name from package.json and it'll be nifj uh, desktop colon forward slash forward slash graph app slash uh, my graph app. You can create deep links to nifj browser. Um, so for example, uh, to run a, a, a browser guide uh, inside uh, nifj browser. So in this case, uh, we're using the um, nifj browser is, is the ID of the graph app. Uh, the command that we're, we're running is play and then we have an argument of movies there and then that will um, open up NFJ uh, browser with play movies um, and the, the, the movie play card uh, really loaded. Uh, you can also um, create links to, uh, or, or uh, sorry, preload uh, NFJ browser with uh, a cipher query. Um, so the command there is edit, and then the arg is the URL encoded um, cipher statement inside there. Um, and for example, um, this is a, um, a an APOC user guide, which I, I launched just the other day. Um, so by each code snippet, there's a running browser uh, button. Um, and by clicking this, what uh, what will happen is uh, a piece of JavaScript will uh, take the, the code, um, URL encode it, and then uh, redirect it, uh, the, redirect the user to um, that, that URL. You can also create a deep link to Bloom. Um, so for example, NFJ, NFJ Bloom. Uh, and then the search parameter would be the um, URL encoded string, which will be used to pre-fill uh, the search bar. Uh, if you're interested in uh, developing uh, graph apps, if you're interested in um, um, you know, talking about um, uh, your experiences of graph apps, we're, we're, we're happy to hear it. Uh, there's a graph apps cal uh, category inside the NFJ uh, community website. Uh, we'd love to hear what you think. Uh, we'd love to hear about your experiences. If there's anything we can make better, um, then please feel free um, to, to let us know. Uh, so that's uh, everything uh, from me. Uh, if anybody wants a more uh, in-depth, uh, hands-on session, then please feel free to, to reach out. Uh, my email is adam at nfj.com or I'm at Adam Cowley on Twitter. Um, or you can join us on the NFJ community site.